Are you aggravated by leaking components, leaking gearboxes? Do you, is leaking a problem at your facility? Today we're going to try to help you guys understand why this may be happening. Oh, hey, this is Scott from Sumitomo Drive Technologies, and today we're going to talk about seals. So when we're, oh God. So when we're talking about seals, when you, when you want to look, you know, when you load in something in Google, you just don't want to type in seals. So we're going to talk about industrial shaft seals and in our case, uh, you know, how they relate uh, to gearboxes. And we're going to go over some seal designs that people uh, ask these questions all the time. What is a taconite seal? What is drywell? Labyrinth, labyrinth plate, labyrinth covers, gamma. What's the difference between Viton and nitrile? What's the difference between nitrile and silicone? And the chemical makeups, uh, that's a lot of stuff to cover. We could be here for days, but we're gonna try to do it in minutes. So it's gonna go fast, so pay attention. So industrial shaft seals, you know, you have shafts that are exposed, so we have to have a way to, to keep the oil, grease, lubrication in and keep the contamination out. The other type of sealing design is when you're separating two different types of lubrication, uh, which in our case, most gearboxes, we call these uh, a drywell. Typical drywell design is, a, it is basically almost like a, a drum looking apparatus or component inside of the gearbox uh, that may rotate with the shaft or it may be stationary and the shaft is rotating within the within the drywell. Typically the shaft is just rotating within the drywell. But we cannot uh, allow oil to mix in with the grease. That's, that's a big problem. Really, when you're, when you're talking about is the seal that I've selected or the seal that we've used, it is, is it going to be effective in my application? Do we have to have, uh, you know, we have to be concerned with speed. We have to be concerned with the, with the environment, you know, the application, the temperature, the ambient operating temperature. Surface speed is, is critical uh, when we're talking about seal selection, as well as shaft material and shaft condition. Um, but you know, when, you, when you're talking about uh, seals, it sounds simple, but, and it's usually one of the cheapest things in a gearbox, but man, it, it, is, it, is, it is very, very important to have, to have that right. So we're gonna talk about radial shaft seals. We're gonna talk about cassette seals. I'm gonna, I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff here to show you guys. First things first, let me, let me show you guys what a collar looks like. So some people call these uh, wear sleeves and uh, we call them shaft collars. And uh, this is, has a, a particular finish on the ID as well as a plunge ground, which is the machining term for the OD. And this finish on the OD uh, and, and really on the ID uh, cannot be directional. In other words, uh, the machining term is it cannot have a lead. When we talk about leads, we're talking about the grinder uh, uh, really moving actually across the face of the, of the component. So when we finish our collars or our shafts, the grinder is coming in and it's what we call plunge grinding. And this way there's no lead. If there's a lead that, depending on the direction of the, of the, the shaft, the oil can find that lead and it'll begin to, it'll begin to trickle. Uh, we see this quite often when gearboxes come back, somebody you know, tried to repair it themselves and they just didn't understand what, what has to happen with that, especially with the shafts. Very important. Uh, this guy here, this guy here is called a speedy sleeve. This guy's still in the original packaging. It's, you, you cannot store these any other way. They will, they will get damaged. And what this, what this guy does, he's going to repair a damaged surface, typically on a shaft, not on a collar. If, if you're putting this over a collar, that, that's, not, that's not a good idea. You should replace the collar if, if at all possible. We, we use these. It's, it's only for repair, and it's, and it's a Band-Aid. Um, but these, these guys are awesome if you can't remove the equipment. They have to be ordered specifically for the shaft and the seal diameters. If you don't know that, you know, give us a call. Uh, you know, we, we don't use anything uh, in most cases that are outside uh, 
typical, typical seal availability and shaft diameters. Uh, but these can be custom made, it takes a little time, but these are great if you have a severe leaker and you can't get the gearbox back, but keep in mind this is temporary, it's not a permanent fix. Th this is a permanent fix. We talked about surface speed, the type of lubricant you're using, the, the application, uh, the seal design may, may vary from that. In a lot of cases ours, uh, the seal design does not, but the protection of the seal or the bottom bearing, which we talked about earlier, with the dry well, that may change. Um, very important to protect those top seals from contaminants. I like to use a hood, a seal hood. It goes over the top. Uh, it looks kind of like this guy. This is a clipper seal, but a seal hood looks very, very similar to that. It has a, a taper to it, rotates around, contaminants that drop down are flung off um, away from the seal during operation. Uh, just don't go and hit these with a you know 5,000 psi pressure washer. That, that that's just not a good idea. Or a hammer, ever. But by the way, this is a clipper seal. This is a type of seal that's used at the on an end bell of a motor, behind the fan to protect the gearbox when it's stopped. This is behind the fan. The fan is out here. This is behind the fan. When the when the when the motor is running and you hit it with you know whatever whatever you need to wash it down with. Uh, that, that's usually good enough to keep contaminants out, but during the stop, this is, this is a really good idea to have during uh, static uh, where the gearbox is sitting still and you need to, you know, don't, just, don't, just don't point your hose into the fan cover. That's just never a good idea. You don't need to do that. But, but one, of the, one, one of the biggest things that we see with seal failures when there is misalignment or your application has heavy radial load and and you may not, you just may not have compensated uh, with, a, with a, a, a more robust seal design. Even the seal materials are, are, can be helpful if you have high radial loading. So what we're talking about with radial load and, and seal lip deflection is there's a large amount of radial load vertically. We, we see this quite often, but the seal cannot, cannot compensate. The lip cannot compensate enough by itself. Uh, speed. So speed, as I mentioned before, speed equals temperature. The selection of the material, which we're gonna, we're gonna talk, we're gonna give you guys some good ideas about the differences between the materials. Uh, you know, you wanna move up to a, uh, a, a better grade material, or tougher, more tougher uh, material than standard. So if you're running at a higher speed, your, your surface temperature is gonna be higher, so you may wanna move into the next grade of seal for us, which is uh, either polyacrylate, or Viton. Viton has a higher temperature than nitrile, doesn't go as low as nitrile, but indoors, uh, Viton seems to serve most, most people's uh, needs very well. Uh, nitrile rubber, we're gonna talk about the materials between nitrile, number one seal that we use, Viton, really the number two seal that we use, and silicone seals, which are pretty, pretty rare. Um, and silicone seals are, uh, you know, they have a, a really low temperature that they can run at, and they also go all the way as high as Viton. But the differences that you're talking about with silicone seals versus Viton is silicone is not as tough, it's a softer material, and in the dynamic movement of a shaft, which we you know we got a little bit of radial movement, that's, that's nat natural with the clearances that we have in the bearings and just the, just the machining of the shaft, silicone is just not gonna hold up like, uh, like Viton seals. Um, but in freezer duty applications where you're flash freezing and you're negative 100 degrees or, or whatever that is, then yeah, silicone is probably, probably what you need in your application. So nitrile can go down to uh, negative 22 degrees, which that covers pretty much uh, uh, everything in the United States. Uh, and then it can go up to 210 F. But keep in mind, this is surface speed and startup speed. And uh, it's very important that if you're starting something that's rubber, uh, which is, you know, which is what seals are made out of, that you don't start it uh, at, at the high rate of speed. Uh, I think the recommendation is probably below 60 degrees. We, we, we think that's a little, little aggressive. But you want to start these things slow to get that rubber warmed up as well as your lubrication. And that, that seal will last a lot longer. 
For other characteristics of nitro that has a good tensile strength, uh, the look of it is, um, this is nitrile. It has, it's shiny, um, it's, it, it, it is tough. It has a good tensile strength here. The next seal we're gonna talk about, which is my favorite seal, by the way. Um, I don't know how you can have a favorite oil seal, but I, but I do, is the, is the Viton seal. They're brown, typically brown in color. Uh, nitrile seals are, are uh, typically black and, and shiny. You can see that this, this material, uh, very popular in industrial app, gearbox applications, and like I said, I, I, I recommend these for pretty much every, every repair that we do, after, you know, especially after we've done the CSI on the gearbox, and we see that it might help. They're a little more expensive than nitrile, uh, more, getting more and more available in the, in the U.S. market, but uh, this, is a, this is a good seal here. The temperature range on that is uh, negative four all the way up to 392 degrees F. Uh, silicone. Silicone seals, I mentioned before, they're good for really cold applications. They're, uh, uh, I guess the term would be, they're much softer material, much more elastomeric, much lower pressure garter spring. Uh, these guys are, you see them there, uh, the colors are typically orange and blue. But those are your different seals. This is your nitrile, which is the number one seal that you see in most gearboxes. So you got the black nitrile, you got the brown um, Viton, and then you got your silicone. Uh, so those are, your, those are your materials that you typically see in gearboxes. We're talking about the, the seal selection, you know, after the fact. So if your gear, you know, the, the seals are designed to hold the lubricant in and either one of these guys will, will do that job. Now, if you're washing the gearbox down with some detergents or it's exposed to chemicals, uh, you, you know, you, you, may wanna, you may wanna read a little bit about which seal is gonna be the best for you based on the chemicals that it's exposed to. Either, like I said, either in your wash down or your, uh, you know, what you, what you guys are, are making. This guy covers a lot of, it takes care of a lot of variables, the Viton, and the nitrile is a little bit more sensitive to what it's exposed to. Seal installation. <laughs> this is not a seal installation tool by itself, and neither is this guy. But you put this guy with this guy, which you know, you really don't want to use this, but maybe a soft face hammer. This is a good installation tool. This is a seal jig for a specific size and it goes over the shaft and it places a seal exactly in the position that we want it to. This is a bearing isolator. These, are, these come in two or three components and you have, if you look close inside here, you have two O-rings that follow the, your sealing surface on the shaft or the collar and you have an O-ring on the outside which is installed in the bearing cover. Uh, these are two pieces of uh, this they come apart, but you're not supposed to take them apart before you install it, so don't do that. And uh, so that's what that guy looks like all together. Uh, these have some advantages over standard lip seals, uh, but they're very expensive, and in most cases they have to be, uh, they have to be designed uh, per the gearbox. So this is called a cassette seal, and guess what material this is? Can anybody tell me? It's brown. It's Viton. Cool, huh? So same, same concept. Um, and by the way, I love Viton. Same concept, it has, um, it has a rotor and a stator. I'm not gonna take it completely apart. Same concept, you have your ID. This rotates, this rotates with the shaft and you have uh, your rotor and you have, once again, your stator. A massive metal case and we have one, two, three, man, that's a lot of lips. So there's a lot of sealing, uh, uh, seal lips inside, on, inside this, this one. So that's a cassette seal. These are really popular in food and beverage. This is a, this is a metal uh, case seal. So you can see that the, that the OD or the outer material is made out of, is made out of metal, it's, it's stamped, and then always your sealing surface for your shaft uh, to keep your, you know, the, the, the oil in, or lubrication in, and the dust out. Hey, check us out on our other videos. Hit us up on social media, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. All right. What else?
what else do you need to know about seals? And yeah, this and this and that, and I mean, it's like a dance class.